Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, Tunisia continues to see anti-austerity unrest. Police clash with protesters in Tunis and in other cities across the country as rallies are held a day after one protester was killed. Also, secessionists in Cameroon call for news of their leader. Nigerian police deny the reported arrest of Sisuku Ayok Tabe. He heads a movement calling for English-speaking Cameroonians to break away from the Francophone majority. And we speak to Oxfam International's Chief Winnie Bianyima. The British-based NGO Oxfam is planning on moving its headquarters from London to Kenya. Bianyima herself is from Uganda and speaks to us about the reason for the move and about her political ambitions at home. But first, after days of unrest, Tuesday night saw fresh clashes break out between Tunisian anti-government protesters and police. In Tunis, security forces fired tear gas at crowds, whilst similar confrontations were seen in the nearby town of Tibourba. One man died there on Monday night during rallies denouncing austerity and recent tax hikes. The government says it's run out of options in its bid to jumpstart the flagging economy. Fadil Amira tells us more. Here in Taburba, a town about 30 kilometers west of Tunis, the road into town is blocked by tire fires and protests and confrontations continue between locals and security forces. Locals say that local citizen Khomsi Yefreni was killed yesterday when a security vehicle ran over his body twice, but security officials deny this Sarah story, saying only that a man died of asphyxiation. The scene remains tense today, with even today his funeral, Mr. Yefani's funeral, being marred by tear gas and confrontations with the security forces. Then the police started to provoke us as usual and fire tear gas at us, as if we're animals. We will continue to protest because we want to guarantee our future. We don't have a future, but we want to provide comfortable lives, at least for our children. We can't find things to eat here. Before, with 500 dinars, we could live adequately. We could buy whatever we needed, and now there's no oil, not even any sugar. Everywhere, all the prices have gone up. The Prime Minister said the peaceful protest will be protected, but the violence will not be tolerated, appearing to question the legitimacy of last night's protests. Meanwhile, the Anata Party has released a statement on Tuesday saying that legitimate social demands have been instrumentalized by leftists and anarchists. Protests have taken place across the country after the rise of prices of basic goods following the implementation of the 2018 budget. Well, to Cameroon now, and Anglophone separatists there are demanding the return of a leader who they believe was recently arrested in Nigeria. Now, police there deny detaining Sisiku Ayuk Tabe. He's the president of the movement calling for English-speaking Cameroonians to break away from the French-speaking majority. Dozens of people were killed last year in Yaoundé's crackdown on secessionists, and Tabe's followers say that they fear for his safety. Last November, in Abuja, France 24 met the leader of Cameroon's separatist movement, Sisiku Ayub Tabe. He was arrested on Friday in the Nigerian city. His allies say he was snatched by armed men from Cameroon. Nigeria denied arresting him, but security sources told France 24 he was indeed taken in by the Nigerian authorities. Some sources in Yaoundé claim Tabe is now in Cameroon. In the anglophone town of Buea, residents called for an end to the violence witnessed in recent months. They'll hit back even harder now. So that's why I think it's an issue that needs to be taken very seriously. I don't think taking them and locking them up will solve the problem. I'd like to say to President Paul Beer, we ask for forgiveness. Please bring these people back and organize this dialogue that we must have with all Cameroonians. Around 20% of Cameroonians are Anglophones. Among them, a minority is demanding independence. The unrest in recent months has pushed thousands of people to cross into neighboring Nigeria. In 1960, a referendum was held in the British Cameroons. Back then, the northern area chose to be part of Nigeria, and the southern region voted to join Francophone Cameroon. 
The members of a Nigerian Shiite Muslim sect are calling for the release of their jailed leader. Police clashed with protesters in Abuja this week as they marched demanding that Ibrahim Zaki excuse me, be released for health reasons. He was arrested in 2015 and still hasn't been charged. His followers say that he is critically ill and being denied treatment. Shiites are in the minority in the largely Christian and Sunni Muslim country. Now, the UN's called on Israel to roll back plans to forcibly send back tens of thousands of migrants to Africa. Last week, Israel began a program to pay illegal migrants $3,500 to leave. They have until the end of March to take the money and go. After that, they face jail. Now, the majority of people affected come from Eritrea and Sudan and say that they left war and persecution behind. Israel, though, treats them as economic migrants. The UN Refugee Agency fears that migrants sent back to sub-Saharan Africa could end up in detention camps in Libya and wants Israel to look at other resettlement options. Official statements that the plans may eventually target families and those with pending asylum claims or that asylum seekers might be taken to the airport in handcuffs are particularly alarming. At a time when UNHCR and partners in the international community are engaged in emergency evacuations from Libya, forced relocation to countries that do not offer effective protection and the onward movement of these people to Libya and Europe is particularly worrisome. Well, as international development aid comes under increasing criticism from leaders in developing countries, the British-based NGO Oxfam International is trying something new, moving its international headquarters from the UK to Kenya. Oxfam's chief, Winnie Bianyima, is from Uganda and she's behind the move. She's also an outspoken critic of Uganda's president, Yari Museveni. Now, she's spoken to France 24's Gronia Harrington about the lifting of Uganda's presidential age limit, whether she might run for president of Uganda, and what's behind Oxfam's move to Kenya. We don't want any more to be sitting in a place where we are far away from the people who live in poverty and making the decisions from there. So we're coming in Niro to Nairobi with our global headquarters. Our big team will be there and work close to people who live in poverty and make the decisions with them. Politicians in this region, including the Kenyan president, Uhuru Kenyatta, have been increasingly critical of international NGOs and of what they see as Western interference. So do you feel like you're moving into a welcoming environment when you're coming into this region? It's not true that they don't want to work with us, but they do express uh, concerns in the region about the role that we should play in their countries. And to some extent, they are right. We, as international organizations, come to these countries to support local civil society, not to replace them, not to speak for them, but to support them to speak for themselves. You have been very critical about a recent piece of legislation that was passed here in Uganda, a constitutional amendment lifting the age limit uh, on the presidency, allowing President Museveni now in his fifth term to run again for office. That bill has now been passed, it's been signed. Do you consider that to be a defeat? It's a setback for our country. It brings us back full circle to where we were. Many people see it as a betrayal of the citizens and the spirit with which we made the 1995 constitution. He's a tired old man. He is, uh, in many ways, a successful leader at the beginning, but towards the end, we are seeing him reversing the very gains that were made when he was the leader. So it's ironic and it is sad, but I see trouble ahead. There's been a lot of speculation, many rumors here about your own political ambitions in, back here in Uganda. And you have said yourself that you wouldn't rule out a run for the presidency if people supported you. Is that still the case? I'm busy working for Oxfam and uh, very happy in my, my role, my second term. But yes, if Ugandans ask me to do that, if they ask me to be the leader who can 
turn this country around at some point, yeah, I would look at it seriously. Winnie Bianima, Executive Director of Oxfam International, thank you very much for speaking to France 24. Thank you very much. Uh, Gronia Harrington there for us in Uganda. Well, that's it for Eye on Africa for now. Thanks very much for joining us. Do so again if you can. Take care.